So as I've said, I mean, the way we turn visual data into images on a PC is we turn all these kind of waves of light that the human eye sees get represented in terms of pixel values for pixels in a kind of final photographic image. Sound also arrives to us as waves, as sound waves, okay? Now, the sound wave is characterized by its amplitude, which is the kind of, if you like, its width, and its kind of either, well, two ways of putting it. You can say either its wavelength, Or, you can also talk about, it's the same sort of thing, it's, it's frequency. Okay. So now, typically, if I increase the amplitude of a wave, if I, if I make another wave which goes like that, what does that mean? How can I tell, what, how does on my ear know that one wave has a greater amplitude than another wave? What, what, how do we, loudness. loudness, yeah. So basically, the amplitude is the loudness of the wave, okay. The wavelength, okay, is the frequency of the wave, okay. So if you have a long wavelength, you have a low sound. If you have a short wavelength, you have a high sound, okay. So that's, that is basically what, a wave is. But as of course, as I said to you before, a computer can't deal with continuous data. It's got to have discrete data. Okay. So it basically what we need to do is, what, what is the word when we turn sound into digital? What's the word? We, it, there is a quantization involved, but what do we do? We sample it, sample it. Exactly. We sample a wave, okay. And what sample means is that instead of it now being a continuous thing of data, we break it down into a set of values, okay? Okay. And we do that a number of times every second, okay? And that's that. So, so imagine that that is a wave, okay? Now, how many times, does anybody know this, how many times do you need to sample a wave in order to get proper stereo CD quality sound? How many times do you need to sample? It's, I'll tell you, it's 44,000. You need to do, to get it, to get... You need to basically do that 44,000 times a second, and you can get a more or less an approximation of what that wave is. Okay. 22,000 is still okay. Okay. You can actually, the lowest you get on PCs are kind of either 8,000 or 11,000. When you do that, however, though, you lose a lot of data. Okay. Because if you imagine, for a, for a wave like that, you, it's it's no problem. But if imagine if it's a, for example, if it's suppose you have a kind of very short wave, and if you have many many samples per second, you can very adequately represent that. But suppose you have few samples per second, so you had one here, one here, one here, one here, you might not get a very good representation of that wave. So what was previously a continuous wave could suddenly turn into a very angular wave. And maybe even, there's a thing called aliasing, a false wave, whereby because of the positions you've sampled at, you get a wrong representation of the wave. And that is why the quality goes down the less you sample. So what is the time? Is it we, are we? 10 to 2, I've still got 10 minutes, all right. So. That's what happens, and so, but there is also the question of at what bit rate you sampling. Okay. So if I do that, 
You know, there are ways you can have kind of 8-bit sampling of sound, 16 or 24. So what that means in practice is when I'm doing my sampling, I create, say, I can work out certain values of the wave at certain points. If I'm using 8 bits, what are the potential values I can have? What's the lowest value I can have using 8 bit? Yeah, well, that's the highest. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Okay, good. Yeah, 0 to 255. Okay. But with 16 bit, I can go from 0. I think this is 65,000, isn't it? Yeah. 65,000. So as you see, if I'm doing 16 bit sampling, all of these little samples can have a value which is much more precise. So, okay, so all these values, if I'm doing 8 bit, that's got to be kind of 0 to 255. So that could be 5, whatever, 200, and that could be 255. But if I'm doing 16 bit samples, I can have a much finer representation of each of the samples. Okay. So that's why, typically, you have to have 16-bit minimum if you want CD quality sound. CD quality sound is 16-bit, OK? There is now, now you can get some kind of sound applications for computers which do use 24-bit sound. It's, it's, I don't know sure whether the human ear is particularly, can actually tell the difference, but I think for people who want absolute audio purity, then 24-bit is the way to, because then you've got 16 million values for all of these samples. But the problem with that being, if you imagine 44,100 samples per second at 16 bits, OK, or if you like, two bytes. OK. So then you've got something like 88,000 K per second. OK. So in a minute, that's going to be, that's going to be 4.8 megabytes. OK. And in three minutes, that's going to be 15 megabytes. And if it's stereo, it's going to be 30 megabytes. OK. So therefore, a three-minute song typically will take 30 megabytes. OK. And that is why, I mean, it's a bit more than 30 megabytes because of the, the mathematics. That's why your typical CD is 70 minutes. OK. Because you can only get 700 megabytes of data on a CD. OK. Now, but it, with MP3 files, I mean, how much does a three-minute song take of, of an MP3 file? 